If you're a long time viewer of this channel, you'll know I bought this compressor pretty much, I think about 14 months ago now. I bought it in October 2018 and I'm filming this now in January 2020. And it was a bit of an impulse buy. I'd finished on a job early, I think, and I ended up driving past Axminster Tools and I had a couple of things I needed to pick up. And they had this there, just sitting there, asking to be bought. And if you remember, I had my old compressor, which had lasted, I think, for 37 years, if I remember correctly. It was very old, but it was dead. It was a dead compressor. To everyone who's passed on their thoughts and regards for my old compressor. It's very happy in compressor heaven now, but there was no salvaging it. There was so many things wrong with it, it just wasn't worth keeping. So I was in the market for a new compressor and I had it narrowed down to about four or five potential options. So bear in mind, this was a few years ago and things will have changed by now, but I was having a look at the Impax little compressor from Screwfix. It was only 90 quid. I did struggle to find a CFM figure for this compressor. And if you work it out based on what they're quoting of 222 liters per minute, it worked out at 7.84 CFM, which seemed ridiculously high for a little 24 liter 90 quid compressor. So I kind of dismissed that as not being correct, but thank you to Paul Lockwood who put together this little video on YouTube. I'll include a link in the description and he timed how long it took to fill the tank. And from that, I managed to work out that it's got a figure of 3.83 CFM at nine bar, which isn't bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. I was then also looking at the little Shepak HC30V and at the time that was 170 pounds. Again, I struggled to find a CFM figure for it, but with a bit of digging, I think it's got a CFM of 4.2, but it doesn't tell you at what pressure. I think that's based on this air displacement figure here, but if you work it on an eight bar pressure at 50 liters per minute, that works out at a CFM of only 1.76, which is terrible, so, <laughs> I have no idea what's correct there, but apparently the CFM is 4.2 at whatever pressure. Another one I was looking at was the HC50V. At the time, this was only actually £5 more expensive at £175, and this is a 50 litre tank on this one. It's quoting an input capacity on the tank itself of 180 litres per minute, but just ignore that. Again, it's saying 120 litres per minute, which is 4.2, so... I don't know how correct that is. The one I really wanted was the little Arasio compressor because it's only 115 quid for the 24 litre one, but nowhere had it in stock at the time and I assumed it just wasn't being made anymore. This has a quoted figure of 4.77 CFM at eight bar. I haven't verified that. I couldn't tell you how correct that is, but that's a fairly respectable figure. And then of course, we've got the Swan DRS 210.30. At the minute, it's £345.95. pence. At the time, I paid £319.96 pence for it. 30 litre tank on it, but a figure of only 2.84 CFM at 7 bar, which isn't great, and I'm going to test the real world figure later on. So as I say, I happened to be driving past Axminster Tools and I thought, well, I might as well just pick it up and then that's it sorted. And it's a really nice looking little compressor. And if you remember, one of the things I really liked about it is how quiet this little motor was because I was used to my old big compressor and it was, you know, it wasn't crazily loud, but it was a lot louder than this little thing. But it wasn't until I got it back to the workshop and I got it all hooked up that I started noticing a few little things about it that... I wasn't best pleased with. For a start, a lot of the things on it just seem really kind of flimsy, like this little control valve for your main air outlet. I mean, what's that? It's tiny, tiny little horrible pressed steel lever. The motor itself seemed to have no protection for like dust, no filters or anything like that to stop dust getting into the actual motor. And at the end of the day, compressors are going to be used in dusty environments. But anyway, I thought, well, I'll get it connected up. I'm sure it'll do the job. It'll be fine. Got it all fired up. And then it's like, 
how do you adjust the pressure? We've got the pressure gauge here, but there's no built-in regulator. Normally you've got an external control to adjust the pressure going to the tool, but on this, the only thing you can do is adjust the cut in and cut out pressure. And to do that, you've got to take this whole assembly off on the top here and adjust a couple of tiny little pots inside here next to all the live cables and just try and get the pressure correct. And that's a thing that you're gonna to want to change probably while the compressor's running, but you would have to do it literally millimeters away from your live 240 volt input wires coming straight into the top of this unit. So really what you need to do is unplug it from the mains, adjust it slightly, plug it back in, try it. If that doesn't work, unplug it again, adjust it slightly, plug it back in, put the cover back on, all of that. It's just rubbish. On a 320 pound compressor, there should be an external pressure regulator to change the final output pressure that you get through this horrible little tiny valve here. So that's not great. And then we've got the instructions. Oh, where do you start? Let me just by way of comparison, here's my little cheapy Stanley air compressor. And if I get instructions with a tool, I would expect at least for the instructions to show a picture of the actual tool that I've bought. But with these instructions, that's a different compressor. That's not the one that I've bought. I've paid 320 quid for this compressor. Why can't they at least include a picture of it? Anyway, you can see here, Tong Cheng Iron Works. And then we've got more pictures of a different compressor, but I mean, it's more or less the same kind of gubbins on the top, I suppose. But then it just kind of goes downhill from there on. Do not install in damp or dusty places. Well, that pretty much rules out any workshop. Please power off the unit and check. Restart the unit after troubleshooting. Mm-hmm. Operation, check before start. Check set bolts and nuts if looseness. Check if electrical cables are correct. Check if voltage is correct. Check if loading current of motor remains in standard level. What does that mean? How am I supposed to check if the loading current of the motor remains at a standard level? Daily maintenance. Release water from air tank after daily use. Uh, please implement under one kilogram per square centimeters. G. Literally means nothing. Check if voltage and current of the power supply to the motor are normal. Uh, I really think, unless you're an electrician, you shouldn't be doing that. Periodic maintenance. Air tank drain valve. Weekly. Hold on. Daily maintenance. Air tank drain valve. Daily. Check pressure switch and safety valve. How? Yeah, whatever. I don't know what any of that means. We've then got a whole load of troubleshooting bits and pieces, uh, a meaningless diagram, an electric circuit diagram. So there is literally nothing in the manual that came with it telling you how to adjust the kick in pressure and the final tank pressure. What have we got here? Pressure switch, pressure control leveling rod to on off the unit manually. What? So I'm sorry in that, if I've spent 320 quid on a tool, that's the sort of instruction manual I'd expect from a 50 quid compressor off eBay. Shocking. As I say, by way of comparison, just have a look at the little instruction manual that came with my Stanley compressor. A fraction of the price, but at least it's properly written and everything actually makes sense. I don't think I'm asking too much to get something decent in terms of instructions with a 320 pound compressor. And then I was looking at the whole motor assembly and it's like, that looks familiar. Where have I seen that before? I mean, the motor assembly isn't exactly the same, but you've got to admit they're pretty similar. And then we get onto the CFM and the CFM is something I could have easily researched in advance, but I thought, you know, Again, 
it was an on a whim purchase and it's something I should have looked into but I didn't so it's my own stupid fault but the CFM on this is rubbish so I've used it occasionally with my nail gun and sometimes with my little blower and things like that but that's it the CFM isn't really high enough to use for spray painting or anything like that so I've been a little bit limited in how I can actually use this thing it's essentially still a brand new compressor and this brings us up to January 2020 and I came to switch it on the other day and noticed this. Now I'm no expert in compressors, but I'm pretty sure when the compressor switched off, there shouldn't be air leaking out of it. The air leak stops when you switch it on, and as soon as you switch it off, you've got air coming out of this little valve thing on the side here. I don't know what this does, I don't know how it works, but some sort of solenoid valve of some description, you can hear the air coming straight out of that. There's obviously something wrong with that. As I say, as soon as you switch it back on, it stops. So my previous compressor lasted nearly 40 years, this one has barely lasted 14 months. Now I have been in touch with Axminster Tools and at first they said it's past the 12 month warranty, there's nothing that we can really do and they gave us contact details for Swan Compressors but I did push them on the matter. I haven't told them that I do YouTube or anything like that because I wanted to get an honest appreciation of what Axminster would do just to a general member of the public. and. Good on Axminster Tools, well done. Without me threatening to do anything, they've agreed to take it back and have a look at it. Unfortunately, that means boxing this up for transport, but I will report back once it comes back from Axminster Tools. Holy moly, impressive packaging, Axminster. Thank you. She's back. The workshop repair note that came with it says uh, cleaned out non return valve and replaced flexible pipe. So I don't know, it cleaned out this maybe and replaced this pipe. That's the only flexible pipe on it. I don't know why that would need replaced. If anyone knows, please post in the comments. I don't know that much about compressors, but presumably this is the main air output from the actual kind of compressor bit. So the air's gonna come through here into this valve thing. Is that a repair I can do myself in the future? If it breaks again or when it breaks again? Because I'm not holding my breath that this isn't gonna keep going wrong with it. I guess we'll find out. I'm certainly not expecting to get 37 years out of it, put it that way. I'm trying not to sound whingy about this, but it's difficult when you've paid like three times more than you should have paid and my last compressor lasted 37 years without a problem. Let's give it a try, see if it works. Yay! It's fixed. So all I can say really, you make your own judgment call. I cannot fault Axminster Tools. Axminster, thank you so much for coming to the rescue and repairing this. You know, I have paid over the odds for this compressor, but you could certainly make the argument that the customer service has made that worthwhile. But heart of hearts, I just can't recommend this compressor, I'm afraid. There's just too many shortcomings with it from the build quality through to the CFM and of course the price. I mean, I could have bought three of the Orazio compressors for pretty much what I paid for this. And I'm not 100% convinced that it's not the same motor from the Orazio anyway. I don't know. But as I say, Axminster have been spot on. So thank you. Let's do a quick real world CFM test on it. It is completely drained and empty. Valve shut. 
Ready, set, go. Now, I'm not going to bore you with my CFM calculations, which I've already got wrong once before, but if anyone wants to double check my figures again, please pop any corrections in the comments below. But it's a 30 litre tank, seven bar, and it took two minutes and 21 seconds, and I work out that that comes out at a CFM of 3.1. So slightly higher than the 2.84 quoted, but still not great. As a very rough guide, if you wanted to use this compressor for spray painting, even doing low volume, low pressure, you would need about six to nine CFM. HVLP, you could easily be looking at nine to 15 CFM needed. Just for fairness, we might as well test my little Stanley compressor CFM as well. Ugh. It's a bit dusty. <laughs> Cover your ears. Hello? Cover your ears. Just purge the tank. Oh, it's just embarrassingly dusty. Sorry, little Stanley, being neglected there in the corner of the workshop. This has got a pressure adjustment knob on it. Right, three, two, one, go. Twenty six seconds. That's amazing. And we're at just past seven bar there. That was quick. Noisy, but quick. So here's my CFM calculation for my little Stanley six litre, and I work out that it's coming out at three point four CFM. So even my little six litre Stanley compressor is doing better. Three point four versus three point one CFM. I mean, it is the noisiest thing in the world, but it only costs ninety quid, and even that has a proper pressure regulator on it. So the tank's at seven bar, but if I've got a tool that I want to be at six bar, for example, and all I need to do is adjust that. And now I've got the tool pressure set to six bar while the tank is at seven bar. I haven't really put much thought into how I'm gonna finish this video, so I'm just gonna kinda of clean this. Mm -hmm. 